Hello and welcome to I Talk to Ghosts, the podcast that needs to be buried deep or it will come back. I'm your haunted host, Jennifer, a spirit medium and a teller of ghost stories. And tonight I have for you ghostly graveyard tales. With spooky season in full force, how could we not wander through the gravestones together? Keeping with this evening's theme, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the practice of using, respectfully, graveyard dirt in spells and rituals. In between all the moonlit graveyard wanderings, linger with me at my seance table. As a medium, I dedicate this time with the intention of calling a spirit close who is connected to someone listening to the podcast. So if you're intrigued by spirit work, please attend. The message could be specifically for you. But first, grab your mugwort and moline herbs. We're heading to the graveyard for some ghost stories. Enjoy. Years back, when I was in high school, some friends and I decided to play a little Halloween prank on a few friends. The plan was to have one of my friend's uncles wait out at the old cemetery until we showed up with our friends. We would walk around for a few minutes and then he was supposed to jump out and scare us. Well, here's what happened. We showed up at the cemetery around 11 p.m. and the friends that we had who weren't in on the plan reluctantly went in with us into the cemetery. After walking a few steps, we all saw this glowing ball of light, which looked like it was about 30 yards away. The light itself kind of looked like a flashlight in one of those orange plastic jack-o'-lanterns that kids trick-or-treat with. Well, when we saw the light, naturally, our friends who didn't know what was going on freaked out I wanted to leave right away, but some of us knew better and we were going to play it for all it was worth. I suggested that we go after it and find out what it was. My friends weren't too thrilled with that idea, but they sure weren't going to sit out in the middle of the cemetery by themselves, so they followed. We never could catch the light. It kept the same amount of distance between us at all times. If we walked slow, it would go slow. If we ran after it, it would move just as fast. The light even went through several sections of fence without rising or dropping its height. The whole time I was thinking to myself, how is my friend's uncle doing all of this? After about 10 minutes of chasing, the light finally just disappeared, which freaked us out even more. By this time, my friends were almost in tears. They were so scared. So we all left the cemetery. When we got back to town and dropped off my friends, we went straight to my friend's uncle's house to find out how the hell he did all of that. Well, he was passed out and his wife told us he had been sleeping for three hours. The next day I saw him, and he apologized for not showing up when he was supposed to. When I told him about what happened, he sort of turned white and apologized some more. To my knowledge, no one has ever seen these lights before or after that night. A couple of years ago, on a cool autumn night, I had an unforgettable experience that will stay with me forever. It all started when a group of friends and I decided to visit a local cemetery after hours. Rumors had been circulating that the cemetery was haunted, and we were curious to see for ourselves if there was any truth to the stories. I was with a couple of friends in one car, 
while another friend drove a separate vehicle. As we made our way through the dark and winding roads leading to the cemetery, I could feel a sense of uneasiness creeping over us. The night was still and eerily quiet, the only sound being the rustling of leaves in the wind. As we pulled up to the gates of the cemetery, I could feel my heart racing. The gates were locked, but that didn't stop us. We parked our cars outside and decided to explore on foot. The moon cast an eerie glow over the gravestones, creating long shadows that seemed to dance in the darkness. We walked amongst the headstones, reading the names and dates etched into the cold stone. The air was thick with a sense of foreboding. We stayed for a little while, nothing much really happening, before we returned to our cars to drive home. We were walking back to our cars when suddenly my friend who was driving the other car let out a gasp and pointed ahead. We all looked, and that's when we saw it. A small figure darting across the road in front of the parked car. We were all frozen in place, trying to make sense of what we had seen. I felt a chill run down my spine and my arms were just covered in goosebumps. We quickly got back into our cars and drove away from the cemetery. As we drove down the dark road, my friend in the other car ahead of me suddenly slammed on their brakes. We pulled up beside them and rolled down the window, asking what had happened. They explained that they heard a loud bang on the back of their car, as if something had hit it. We pulled over and got out of the cars to inspect the damage. To our horror, we found small handprints smeared across the back of the car, as if a child had touched it. A realization hit us cold. The figure we had seen across the road was not a figment of our imagination. It had been real. I was scared as we stood in the darkness, unsure of what to do. We all agreed we could feel a presence watching us. We all got back into our cars and drove away as quickly as we could. To this day, I still cannot explain what we saw that night. Was it a spirit of a restless soul haunting the cemetery or something more sinister? Whatever it was, it left a mark on me and my friends. We never spoke of that night again too afraid to relive the terror that had gripped us in the darkness. But the memory of that unforgettable night will always stay with me, a chilling reminder of the thin veil that separates the living from the dead. Spooky season is upon us. Listen to I Talk to Ghosts for an atmospheric chill and to never feel alone, knowing the spirits are always around you. The autumn months are the perfect time to share and recommend this podcast to your ghoulish friends. Thank you for supporting the podcast and sharing the spooky. Hello and welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. I have a message from the spirits this evening. So thank you for joining me in the candlelight. Tonight as I work, I have with me the stone jet. Jet is a very dark black stone. And like any black stone, its properties involve protective energy. And it's also a stone of good luck, mental clarity, and strength. It's said to protect you from bad health, violence, negative energy, and against the evil eye. So if you ever want that extra protective boost, find a piece of jet and wear it or keep it near you. Tonight, as I open up my space, 
with the intention of connecting a spirit to someone listening. I'm feeling brother, uncle energy coming in. He has a very thoughtful presence, either deep thought or a bit of a heavy personality. His house was his domain. It was his sanctuary and his garage with working on his cars. He feels like a mechanic. It feels like he did this. It feels like this was his trade. He'd have you water the lawn when you were over. I believe this is your uncle. His wife was much more lively and boisterous and kind of was the reason she was the one pulling people in, inviting people over. Pull in the backyard. It feels like she has not passed, which is why he is coming through. Wow, he collected magazines? It feels like he never wanted to throw out mail. Because what if it was important? But he never got around to sorting it. They had a long driveway. <laughs> this is me getting random elements just coming in. His dog would eat apples from the apple tree in the yard. And I'm seeing mud boots. Mud boots or rain boots. Okay, I'm going to ask him what his message is tonight. I'm seeing celebration, but I'm also seeing conflict. Perhaps the whole family is getting together and that can cause personalities to clash. I think this event is stressing you out and he is finding it very important for you to pause and rest and take care of yourself. Don't push yourself going forward. He's advising you to really take it easy, both mentally, emotionally, physically. Really don't take on that personal responsibility that you have to do something. You have to be there. Um, you don't have to do anything. And recognize that you feel better when you are the one coordinating and doing all the things, but really let it go. You don't need that right now. I just can't stress that enough. I'm going to leave it at that. If these messages connect for you and these details make sense, please reach out. I'm compelled to offer you either a spirit reading or a tarot reading, whichever you're more comfortable with. And let's just see what other messages are there for you. Thank you. Would you like a free spirit reading with me and record your reading for the podcast? Sign up for your chance to be selected by visiting italktoghost.com slash guest. And as an added bonus, if you don't want to leave your reading up to chance, I'll let you in on a secret. There's a discount offer to book a private session with me, so you can book a date and time for certain. Visit italktoghost.com slash guest for more details. Welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. Let's turn up the spooky a notch or two and talk about one of the more mysterious and sometimes repelling and fear-provoking magical ingredients, graveyard dirt. Graveyard dirt or dust is from a graveyard or a specific grave and it is among the most crucial components of many, many spells, and your beliefs influence your uses for it. If you think a graveyard is full of sorrow and threatening, you could use the dirt as a source of malevolent power, and if you believe it's a place of peace and a way to connect with your ancestors, you can use graveyard dirt for benevolent purposes. It's commonly used in amulets and spells, and how you collect it can even vary. Some believe there's no need to dig, a handful will do, 
while others believe you need to take the dirt that has been touching the coffin right above where the corpse's heart would be. And in hoodoo traditions, three scoops are required, one from above the head, one from the heart, and one from below the feet of the deceased. Others insist on using the dust collected from tombstones. Graveyard dirt can be combined with other ingredients such as nine nails and buried under an enemy's door during the waning moon to create a wasting away hex. By the way, ordinary dirt itself is used in a lot of magic. Dirt from a footprint is used in love spells or for harm, such as with goofer dust, hot foot powder, jinx powder, and crossing powder. Oftentimes, graveyard dirt is used to symbolize death to an enemy. Or it can be used in a protection spell to keep someone away from you, even a ghost. Again, a specific grave could also influence the magic. Soil from a famous artist's grave could be used to inspire a creative spark. Earth from the grave of a wealthy person might be used for prosperity spells. Or take a sample from the grave of your own loved family member for support and ancestral protection. Don't have a grave that you can borrow from? Graveyard dirt can also be merely a nickname for actual botanicals, such as valerian root, for example, because it has a terrible spell, but it also helps you sleep like the dead. Patchouli is often called graveyard dirt because of its unique, wet, earthy aroma. And moline can be added to both of these for a bit of a graveyard blend. Patchouli, valerian root, and moline are also associated with the shadowy Hecate, queen of the night and goddess of witchcraft and necromancy. Whatever your use is for graveyard dirt, it's not very good karma to trespass or desecrate property, so please act accordingly. It's always good to leave a token of appreciation whenever you take anything, so consider planting flowers to replace the dirt you've taken, or be more traditional, leave coins, tobacco, or a sip of alcohol as an offering. Have you used graveyard dirt in a spell? I'd be curious to hear your story, so please email me or leave a comment where you can. Also, while you're there, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast because it's the spirited thing to do. (laughs) And with that, dear listener, we've reached the end of this episode of I Talk to Ghosts. I hope you've enjoyed my spirit work that I shared with you this evening, as well as those graveyard ghost stories and a little bit of information about how to use graveyard dirt in your magical work. I thoroughly hope that you are having an amazing spooky season and that it's the best one yet. Make sure to join me again for the next episode of I Talk to Ghosts. In the meantime, wherever you wander off to in this world or the next, just remember, come back and visit with me. Have a lovely evening and good night.